blade and quill. Hello and welcome. This is part four of a video series on Krita's tools. Uh, last week, we talked about the perspective transform tool and we looked at all the buttons available in the tool options window. Throughout the tutorial, I showed you how this particular mode of transformations allows you to convert any images into ones and can fit perfectly onto perspective scenes or display. Today, we are going to talk about the warp tool. So let's get started. Let's look at the warp options. If you click on the anchor strength drop menu right here, you will see that we have three choices. Default affine, strongest similitude, and strong rigid. These are supposed to change the algorithm used to establish the strength of a deformation. However, <laughs> to tell you the truth, they don't make any drastic change. Uh, I've tried all of them and I didn't see any difference between the three. So if I were you, I would just leave uh, the options alone. I just leave mine as default and it's just fine. You can warp from all angles. Just click on any of the warp anchor to activate it and then drag it to wherever you want it to be. You can stretch downward, upward and from the sides. Make sure to not overstretch. If you do so, you will damage your lines. When you click on the warp button, you will get a standard grid of nine points, three rows of three points. Click here on the arrows to get more or less rows. Four will get you 16 anchors, five will get you 25 anchors. And also, if you want, you can type directly in the window. You don't have to use the arrows. And if you type 10, as you can see, we'll get 100 anchors. So as I mentioned earlier, in order for you to be able to warp, you will need to click first on an anchor to activate it, and then you can drag it. If you don't do that, nothing will happen, or maybe your cage will move. Here I am going to show you how I use the flexibility mode. The flexibility uh, here defines the strength of uh, the impact created by moving our anchor points, right? So what you do is that you move a slider until the image goes uh, crazy. <laughs> it's almost like Krita is telling us, uh, don't go over that number because uh, then I can't take it. <laughs> So what I do is that I slide back and forth until I get to a number that is right before the image gets distorted. So then I believe I have set my maximum flexibility point for my image. Now I understand that this number is not fixed. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, every time we create a new image, we need to tweak and adjust our settings uh, accordingly with uh, you know, every project, right? Now I'll look what happens if I set the flexibility back to zero. So as you can see, the number matter. A quick note, when you are in the warp mode, you can rotate your image. You can move your image. But you cannot resize it. I use the warp tool uh, right about the middle of my character design. It's a good way for me to make a quick changes and see what works or doesn't work. 
Then I decrease the opacity of my layer, I create a new layer above and I retrace. During that step, I add more details and I make uh, more changes. So now let's see a quick comparison. Uh, this is uh, what I started with. Then I warped the first time to test and see where I wanted to go. And then I went full game on and I did some serious warping because I felt more comfortable with my character. I finally got the idea of where I wanted to go. So as you can see, warping is a powerful tool and very, very helpful. So as you can see here, the anchor points are predefined for us on the frame, right? However, if you want, you can draw yourself the anchor points. So this way you can warp one specific area of your drawings. First, you need to use your lasso tool and select the area you want to warp. Then you go back to the transform tool, back to the warp tool, and then here you're gonna click on draw. You're going to set points by just clicking where you want them to be. In order to work, you need to lock the points. And now as you can see, you can warp just on that point or the other. This allows you to have more control of what you want to do with your drawing. It's very specific. Now don't forget to click first and then move. Now let me show you something else. We are going to do the same again. We are going to select our antenna with the lasso tool. Go back to the transform tool to the warp mode and then to the draw. We're going to redraw points again just by clicking. Now we need to lock them and uh, we are going to uh, move again. I'm showing you just, you know, how flexible it is and how important it is to choose you know, the right point to move uh, your uh, object the right way. Click here, hold the control key. The buttons become red and look at the arrow that you see in the middle. You can now move both at the same time. You just drag this uh, two-sided arrows up or down and then your points will move at the same time. You can use this technique inside the regular grid frame as well. Here I have subdivided the grid into 81 areas. I am going to hold the control key and select all the anchors or nodes around his face. We are going to rotate the face. We only need to step away from the frame until we see the round arrows. Now we can warp. As you can see, you can have a lot of fun with this. To move the head in any directions, uh, up or down or side to side, over the frame until you see the four headed arrows. Okay, now that we are done with the changes, the only thing we need to do is uh, click apply. So now this is where we are getting to the interesting part of the uh, character design. I uh, trace above my last warping and I add even more details, uh, uh, more than I did earlier. All right, I'm going to speed up uh, the video like that you don't have to stay here forever and I will see you at the very end.
These are the steps I took to create uh, this uh, little alien character. As you can see, it takes a little work to create perfection. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyway, this is how it looks uh, painted. Uh, please let me know if you like uh, this little alien character. I especially created it uh, for the shooting of this video. In the next tutorial, I will show you the fourth mode of a transform tool, which is the cage. So until next time, have a great week and keep practicing. Bye.